turbo, new injectors. It was Alex from North Dakota. So when did, how long has it taken you, Alex, to get it to this point? It took me three years because I was working full time and learning how to do everything as I went. Right. And I didn't know what I was building from the start. I saw a van that I liked the wheels on, right. so I bought it. And I was like, you know what, I'll rhino line it and toss a futon in the back. <laughs> well, that happened and then the first thing I realized, I don't even like the wheels anymore. My friend, and the 460 had a knock, so my friends were like, you should put a 4BT Commons in it and nice. make it four-wheel drive, <laughs> and that's how the whole thing started, and they so, told me, like, it'll be easy, just do a body swap, Right. even though you can't find anything on the internet as far as it being documented, right. and being done, I was like, alright, I'll do it, <laughs> well, three years later, I finally finished it, and I have just about 7,000 miles on it. What's the hardest part of the build, Alex? The, the hardest part of the build probably be not having a lift. You yeah. know, once the body's on, it's on, and the clearances get pretty tight. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had issues like I had to have the uh, inject injection pump rebuilt. I had to rebuild the vacuum pump, and it's pretty tight in there, so yeah, it's bloody knuckles and no room, huh? <laughs> yeah. How how long have you been living in it? Um, I lived in it for 30 straight days in August and then I came back to Dickinson and I fixed some things on it and decided what I wanted to do as far as work or go back full time in the van. So now I've only been back in the van for a couple weeks. What would, you, what would you do different if you were going to rebuild the same thing? I hate to say it, I love this thing, it's cool and unique, uh -huh. but I probably would have rebuilt the 460 uh, and put electronic fuel injection on it okay and probably would have left it two-wheel drive and just put a badass winch on it um, just because it's been such a mechanical feat right now that it's done I'm glad I have it yeah but, you know, I, I spent a lot of weekends a lot of late <laughs> evenings telling friends and family I'm busy working on the van and a lot of them never thought it would get done so do people, your family, they say you're kind of crazy? Because they always, people ask, right? You know, right. like they thought I was crazy when I built my trailer. But, but my wife came around. She's like, oh, it's pretty cool now, you know? They think I'm crazy for pursuing this lifestyle. And right. they thought the project was crazy too. Um, some of them, I don't think necessarily even believe me what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> they think, oh, he'll be gone for a week or two and he'll be back and uh -huh. I'll just get a job and be a normal person. Right. Um, when, when the chassis was separate from the body, there's a lot less support as well. <laughs> oh, you know, you yeah. You see that and it looks like a mess and like something that will never be completed, which in a lot of cases it's, it's true. Right. But no, my, my parents in particular have been good about it. Yeah. They're maybe a little bit confused and anxious, but they've been supportive. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I always supported myself anyway. So. I think it's a, a neat lifestyle and it gives you freedom while you're, you said, like while you're young. Because yeah. when you get older, it's hard to leave that, you know? So yeah. you can say, Maybe you'll find something out that you, you know, a new profession that you really enjoy, you know, because right. a lot of people, there, a lot of people go to work every day and they don't enjoy it. So they just work to work, you know, so. Yeah, I was yeah. just stressed out. I had a great career. Right. I was going in every day and just being stressed out for 12 hours a day and going home, not being able to let it go. Yeah. I've, I've experienced a lot of untimely death in my life, so I realized that, you know, this we never know when it's going to end. It's going to end for all of us. So, life is I'd much short. Rather pursue something like this and be in the yeah. outdoors and be with my dogs every day. So. What are the dogs' names? This is Buddy. All right. This is Bell. Uh, they they keep you company, huh? Oh yeah, they keep me busy. That's I cool. Right on, Alex. I appreciate it. Into about right here, it folds out like this. Okay. Have you heard of the uh, the rendezvous, the rubber stamp rendezvous, or something like that in Quartzsite, Arizona, every year? No. Okay, so you got to look it up, um, and it happens in, in the same time that King of the Hammers does, or a little before. And people, that's the whole, the whole thing is there's seminars in the middle of the desert about building vans. Oh, wow. And uh, it's called RTR. Okay, yeah, I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, it stands for whatever. I didn't put that together, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the guy, you know, that guy Bill or whatever, yeah. I forgot. And so he interviews people like you, and he says, how you know, this is a better lifestyle than I was telling you before, like, you work for a company or whatever for 35, 40 years and you don't get no retirement and you don't have, you know, maybe social security might not be there. Sure. And then, and then you're too old to do anything, you know? Yeah. So and lucky enough to still have your health. 
Yeah, you're yeah. lucky if you still have health and you know all that stuff. And he says you can live out of a van, reasonably comfortable and see the world. And he says he says some of the jobs he talks about on there would be like park rangers and different things, being outside that we like to do. And that's what I was thinking, you know, that what a great lifestyle. If I was to go back in time, like yeah. I would do that. Oh, I would do what you're doing. You know, yeah, definitely turning it into a job like a park yeah. ranger. That, so you got the TV. Yeah. So just, yeah. This is the only table surface I have. It just slides out. That's perfect. And you built all this. Yeah, I built it, built everything. And then under here. Oh, have you have some, your kitchen. Oh, yeah. you put the wood floor in. Yep. Yeah. It's got a wood floor. So under here, I've just got a little shelf and some storage for some dry foods and got my little rechargeable vacuum. So oh Beagle, my gosh. Like yeah, you got to have that. I figured I'd, I just put a curtain so that way, even with the bed folded all the way down, I still do have access. Yeah. So this pulls out the stop. And it's just a little galvanized tub for the sink. And oh, you made a sink too then? Yep. Yeah. And it's got two five gallon jerry cans under here. You just dump them, yeah. Just with uh, submersible. No, the, there's no gray water. Oh, it goes out the bottom. Yep. Right? I use Dr. Broner's yep. uh, hemp soap. Yeah, yeah. So it's just got a submersible pump that runs to the oh shower. Oh my head. gosh, that's cool. So I can pull that outside and shower with it as well, which I do. Dang. And then it turned out great. Just. just just do normal setup yeah, yeah. here. How is it insulated? It is. I could have done a better job. There's yeah. uh, reflectix on the roof. Uh, under ND camper van, right? Yep. Right on. I've been North. meaning to get like nice stickers.